This is the fastest way you can get your money back if you want to get into solar. Or you could go this route. In this video, I'm going to explain why this one is a lot cheaper and a lot faster, but depends on how far you want to go and how much money you want to get back. So these are grid inverters. What they do is they only produce as much power as you need and therefore you're not pulling anything out of the network. And it's all a math question, right? So before I get into details as far as why is this one the most profitable way, you have to look at it this way. You have a subscription service with the uh, uh, company, which pays for the lines and all that stuff to be hooked up to the network. And that one is about 20 to $30 a month. You could see on your bill is the service charge. You can't get rid of that one. So it doesn't matter what you do, you're always gonna have to pay that one. So even if you produce all your power as I'm producing right now over here and I'm not, not using almost any power from the network, you're still gonna get like a 20, $25 bill every month. I'm actually, mine is like $22 a month and that's the lowest that I could get it. It doesn't matter what I do. That's the lowest I could get it. If it's a summer or it's a winter, it doesn't care. But I could produce all the power that I need, so therefore I don't pay for any of the power, which is really, really good. But this is not the most profitable way to do it because it takes a long time to get your money back and it's a little bit more complicated. As you can see, there's like a bunch of wires and fuses and things everywhere. And people have asked, what is the fastest way that you can get your money back? And this is the fastest way. These are called micro grid tie inverters. And this one is 350 watts. So this one can produce 350 watts. These can produce 650 watts. So when you're looking at it, you see it's so small, you know that it's not gonna do 350 and you're right. If you put this one outside and it doesn't have proper cooling, uh, this will do maybe 200, 250, it will start overheating and it'll start throttling back. It has a temperature sensor in it. Uh, it's made by a Chinese company, but why is this the most profitable way that you can get your money back? First of all, they're cheap. 60 bucks, something like that. So uh, I'm gonna put a link at the bottom of the video for those people that are interested. But what they do is they hook up directly to your solar panel. So as you can see the connections over here, the solar panel go in here and this one plugs in directly to the wall. It's crazy, but this one plugs in literally to the wall and then you plug this one to the solar panel. And that's it, you're starting to produce power. But there are limitations with this thing. And um, why am I saying that you're getting your money back the fastest? Because you're gonna have 400 watt solar panel, you're gonna have this, it will cost you $200 for the solar panel and another $50 for this thing, and then you're golden. Math correction while I was editing the video. So the inverter is about 60 bucks. A 400 watt solar panel, it's about $200. It's about 50 cents per kilowatt these days. So you will pay $250. That what will be your initial investment. In sunny conditions, this one has the capabilities of producing about two kilowatts a day. That's 60 kilowatts a month, and depends on how much you pay per kilowatt. I pay 13 cents a kilowatt, so that will be about seven bucks a month that I'm gonna get back by not by producing my own electricity. So seven bucks a month, you do the math, in perfect conditions, 70 to 80 dollars a year. And again, correction. If you spend $250 and you're making about $70 to $80 a year, then you'll get your money back in like three years. When you scale up, actually the math doesn't come out too bad. So I have about $3,000, maybe $4,000 in the system because I'm keep adding up and, and all that stuff. And I could produce all my power and I could capture into the batteries and things change. The math changes a lot because you have a lot more equipment. There's more failures, little fuses here and there that blow and you have to replace them. So it gets a little bit more complicated. So when you when you go to the side, theoretically, I, I, I make about $600 to $700 worth of electricity every year out of this system. So if I spend $4,000, you do the math, it'll take me five years to get my money back. Even though it's smaller, it's a lot more affordable. This is the easiest way you can get your money back for it. You don't have to know anything. You just get two solar panels that are compatible with it in the voltages that this one works. And then you put your solar panels in here and plug it in and you're good to go. This is how I've started. But then, you get into that race of trying to catch every kilowatt. So I could see that when I was at home, this was producing enough power sometimes to even push power through the network. And the problem is that when you push power through the network, you pay for it. So at that point, I realized that um, if, if you have a house with a low consumption, like you could put this one on a balcony, on an apartment, but if you have a house with a low consumption and you're only using 150 watts and you're producing 250, the problem is that you're paying for 100 watts. And, and that thing was driving me nuts. So sometimes I leave home. I go for work or, or grocery shopping. And when I do that, big problem, right? I was literally paying for the power that I was producing. So when you go to this system over here, you are basically saving all that power. It has sensors, it doesn't push any power back in and you save it into the battery and you could also produce at night when this one didn't. 
And also this one didn't produce any power after six o'clock when I was coming home from work. And that's what I need most of the power. So now I could store it and put it into the batteries and push it back into the net. This one is $60. It's, uh, it's a fifth of a price of this thing. So you would think that you're getting money back a lot faster, but you don't really get your money back a lot faster because you also have advantages of scaling up. So when you scale up and you start to catch every kilowatt, then it makes, makes a little bit of a difference. But going from this to three was a mistake. And this is not how you get your money back fast. If you want to get your money back fast, you change from this to one of these, not three of these. And I'll explain to you how that works. The problem is that the first inverter is the most profitable one. This one will do 80% of the work, even though it's equally divided between the three of them. One can do 80% of all the work that all three do. And, and, and allow me to explain that because you have to understand how it works. It's very, very important. Let's say they have a thousand watts consumption. For the sake of argument, let's say that you always have a thousand watts consumption, right? This one will produce 650, so it will run at 100%. So you're gonna get your money back for it. But the problem is that this one will run at 650, but you only need an additional 350 watts for covering that 1000 watts in consumption. So what happens is that this one only runs at 50% efficiency, and then this one just sits idle because unless you turn something on that requires even more power, then this one really doesn't do anything. Now, the power is equally distributed in between the, the three of them. So it's not like this one is doing 650 all the time, this one is doing 350. It's actually distributed equally in between all of them so you don't put that much load in just one of them. But if you wanna get your money back really, really fast, this can cover 80% of the power needs that I have in the house. And you have to understand how those power needs are because we always wanna catch that microwave running at 2000 watts, but that's not our biggest consumer in the house. Even though it's a big consumer, that's not the biggest consumer on your bill per month. Your biggest consumers are the smallest consumers, the things that are plugged in and running all the time. For example, your router uses 25 watts. That's 250 watts in 10 hours, a little bit over a half a kilowatt a day, every day, 365. Your alarm system, 25 watts. Again, same map. Your modem from your internet connection. Guess what? You're not paying just for the internet. You're paying for powering on that modem 20, 25 watts every hour. It adds up. So you have a base load for your house. What is your base load? Your base load are, are the always on things. Like for example, router, modem, alarm system, clocks for your stuff in the house, chargers that you forgot to unplug, little things that use very little power, but there's a lot of them. And then those are the things that even if you're at work or you're at home or you're sleeping, they always use power. And first, what you have to do is you have to cover your base load. So that's the fastest way you can get your money back for it. If your base load is, let's say 500 watts for a bigger house with more people living in it. 500 watts, it's five kilowatts in 10 hours, 10 kilowatts in 20 hours, 12.5 kilowatts a day. That's power that you're paying for regardless if you turn your microwave on, your TV on, or other things on. And that's where one of the inverters comes in very, very handy because this one can produce 650, right? So if your base load is 500, then this one will produce 500 all the time and then you're catching those 12.5 kilowatts. In the same time, if you turn your microwave on, you uh, turn your TV on, you turn your computer on, and you're using another five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 kilowatts, then this one can compensate from 500 to 650 and it stops there. So you're still catching some of those kilowatts, but then not all of them, right? And that's where the game comes in and then you start spending more money because you wanna catch the second part of those kilowatts. You buy a second inverter and then all of a sudden you realize that your microwave uses a lot of power or you have to like not turn your microwave on when you have your heater on or whatever. And then you get a third inverter and then all of a sudden you're gonna end up with 10 of them running down the wall. At that point, the further down the line you go, the less profitable the inverters are. But still, having one is the most profitable. As I said, 80% of all the power in the house can be covered by one of these. And then the remaining 20%, unless you have big, big, big loads, which some people do, but I don't. But everything else down the line is just a gimmick. And it's just um, uh, the race of catching the last kilowatt and not let the power company win. Because remember, the money you save you don't pay taxes on it. So if you save $100, you keep all $100. If you make $100, you pay 20, 30% taxes on it, so you only keep 70. 
but the money you save, you don't pay taxes on it. And that's where the, the good thing about having your own solar makes sense. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, stay subscribed to the channel and share this with your friends because I really need the views.